In this video, we're going to take a quick look at how to deal with files in a RESTful API in PHP, including how to upload, retrieve, and delete them. I'll be using the slim PHP macro framework, as this gives us a head start by including things like routing and easy access to the request and response. I have a full video on how to create a REST API using Slim, and there's a link to this in the description. As for this tutorial, let's get started on the command line by installing the Slim framework and its dependencies using Composer. To use Slim, we also need to install a package that implements PSR7, so we'll install the one provided by Slim itself. All this basic setup is covered in detail in the full Slim API video. In the same folder where Composer has created the vendor folder, let's create a public folder, and in there, a file called index.php. In here, let's add the PHP opening tag and enable strict type checking. Then let's require Composer's autoloader to load the package classes automatically. We'll be using three classes from the packages that we've installed. So let's import these into the current namespace with some use statements, adding aliases for the request and response interfaces to make the class name shorter. Then let's create an instance of the slim application object by calling the static create method on the app factory class. Now we can start to add endpoints. Let's start with an endpoint to create a resource, specifically an image file. As this is a RESTful API, we'll make a POST request to the slash API slash images URL. We'll use a callback function to handle the request and return a response. Just to check this is working up to this point, inside this function, let's just write a simple message to the response body and return the response itself. Finally, at the end of this script, let's run the application. To run this, we'll use the built-in development server. So on the command line from the root of the project folder, let's run that on port 8080, specifying the public folder as the document root using the dash T flag. We'll use Postman as the API client. So let's create a new request, selecting the HTTP POST method and the URL of the local development server with the slash API slash images path. When we send this request, we get a successful response with the body of the response containing the message. So now we know this is all set up and working correctly, we can remove the code that outputs this message. Instead, in this function, we want to process a file upload and save it to a folder on the server. First, let's get the details of the uploaded files from the request, which in Slim, we do with the get uploaded files method. This returns an array whose indexes are the names of the parameters from the request body. This is similar to the files array in plain PHP. However, in Slim, the array elements are objects that represent the uploaded file. In this example, let's get a parameter called file from this array and let's dump it out to see what it contains. In Postman, to send a file as part of the request, in the body tab, Select form data as the type. Then let's enter the string file as the parameter name and change the type from text to file. Then we can select a file with the select files button. Now when we send this request, in the body of the response we get an uploaded file object printed out. Instead of printing this out, first let's validate that this parameter actually exists in the request body. So let's check to see if there is an element in the files array with a key of file. And if not, let's write out a message to the response body, then return the response. As is typical in an API, let's encode the response body as JSON. So we'll also set the response content type to JSON. Also, we'll set the response status to 422 to indicate that we're unable to process the request because the data is invalid. Back in Postman, if I remove this parameter from the request and send it again, we get the JSON encoded message in the body of the response and the 422 status code. Now we know a file parameter has been submitted, we can validate it. In plain PHP, when a file is uploaded, various errors can occur, which are described by these constants. For example, if the server was unable to save the file. 
If no error occurs, the error code is equal to this OK constant. To get the error code, we call the getError method on the file object. If this is equal to any other value other than the OK constant, let's return a 422 error again. To keep this simple, I won't include an error message in the body of the response, but you can of course do so if you want, just as we did above. Next, let's validate the size, which we can do with the getSize method. This is an integer that represents the size of the file in bytes. Let's limit the file upload to one megabyte. So if the size is bigger than this, again we'll return a 422 response. Let's try sending a request with a file that's larger than one megabyte. And we get the 422 response. Next, let's validate the type. We can get the media type of the file with the getClientMediaType method. As this is an image API, let's restrict the file type to just images. To keep it simple, let's create an array that just contains the media types for PNG and JPEG files. Then, if the client media type isn't in this array, again we'll return a 422 status code. Let's try sending a request with a file that's less than one megabyte, but not a PNG or JPEG, and again we get the 422 response. So now at this point, a valid file has been uploaded to the server. The way PHP handles uploaded files is to first save them to a temporary folder on the server. So we need to move the file from this folder to a more permanent location. First, let's create a new folder in the project root called Uploads. Then, to move the file from its temporary location, we call the moveTo method, specifying a fully qualified file name for the file. So let's use the dir name function with the dir constant to get the parent folder of the public folder. Then add the uploads folder. Then we can get the original file name using the get client file name method. Then let's respond with a 201 status code indicating that the resource has been created. If for some reason this fails, then an exception will be thrown. So let's surround this with a try catch block and if an exception does occur, we'll return a 500 status code. Note that the moveTo method will overwrite an existing file with the same name. Let's give that a try. If I submit a request with a valid file, we get the 201 status code in the response. And in the uploads folder, there's the file. Next, let's see how we retrieve a file resource. Let's add a get root with the path slash API slash images, and as this is a RESTful API, we'll also include a placeholder for the ID of the resource. I'm not actually going to validate this ID, we're just going to see how to return a file from the API. But in a full application, you'd be linking the files to some sort of identifier and checking to see if they exist and so on. In this example though, we'll just keep it simple and use the file we already uploaded hard coding the file name. So let's get the fully qualified path of that file. Then let's get its contents as a string using the file get contents function. Once we have this, we can write it to the response body. As the file we uploaded is a PNG file, let's return the response with the PNG media type. Obviously in a full application, you'd get this media type from the file itself or from where you'd stored it along with the file. Let's try that by creating a GET request to that endpoint, including an arbitrary value for the ID. When we send this request, we get the image in the body of the response, including a status code of 200, which is the default. Finally, let's see how we would delete a resource. So let's add a delete root, again with a placeholder for the resource ID. Inside the callback function, to keep it simple, we'll just use the existing file again. Then, to delete it, we'll use the unlink function. Finally, we'll return the response. As above, the default status code is 200, so we don't need to specify it. Let's give that a try, creating a new request that uses the delete method, to the delete endpoint, and including an arbitrary ID value. When we send this, we get the 200 response. And in the uploads folder, we can see the file has been deleted. 
To keep this video short, I won't include an endpoint to update an existing resource. But, for example, it would use the HTTP patch method and the same techniques for validating and creating a new resource that we created above. There's a link to all the source code shown in this video in the description, along with links to sites shown and relevant videos. If you found this useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Many thanks to my supporters on Ko-Fi, and as always, thank you for watching.